Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. This is Richard for Welsh Tech, and today we're looking at something from Arctic. This is the Liquid Freezer 3 Pro 280 millimeter ARGB AIO. Should you consider it? Let's find out, shall we? Okay then, so this is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 Pro 280 ARGB. So this is the white version. It does have MX included has a six-year warranty and that is what it actually supports so let's get this open okay first of all you're greeted with the top cover of the AIO which does have a little fan so let's take a look at this Ooh, that's pretty and you got this little fan and this will be for VRMs then of course and you got this little sticky pad to keep that there very very nice I do like that looks very very nice I like uh, white products in general but that's just me so let's get this out now over here actually no we'll go through the accessories first because this does have two different types of accessories so it's got this one by here this one would be for AMD these are the AMD specific mounts it does come with uh, MX6 but there comes with the cables the attachments and of course, then we got this one by you then, which is... What's this? Aha, this is the AM... No, sorry, this is the Intel bracket by here. That is cool. So that is what you hold the CPU down with. That's just better for contact for the CPU itself. Obviously, it supports uh, 14th gen as well as 1851, which will be the Ultra Series for Intel. So... So have a look at the I'll get the AIO out and we'll have a look. Okay, so this is the AIO beer. Now it does come with obviously that but there. Obviously, you're gonna have to peel take this part off by here for the magnetic top, which obviously goes by here, like that. Goes on, and that's what it looks like. Which looks very, very sleek. I do like it. Wow, the magnet. Whoa, magnets are very, very strong. That's the pump up there. And then of course then it's got the Arctic logo, there's the base plate, which is rather small, but that should be fine for AM5 as well as Intel. So, as for the fans, the fans are daisy chain here, as you can see with pigtails, and it looks like it does have a spare one here, just in case you want to do that as well. Looks very nice, these are 140 fans. So you're going to expect this to be very, very good when it comes to thermals. It does have the Arctic embossed on it, which is nice. Nice white standard radiator. It's quite thick, to be honest. Very thick. <laughs> so, now, what I don't see is the pump connector. It's one thing I don't see is the pump connector. Unless this takes a connector. I don't know. So... Let's have a look at the, these. So that's going to be for the oh, VRM. That's going to be for the VRM fan and pump. So the pump is a four pin. So the fan, so is the VRM. That's a four pin. But if you look at these by here, they don't look like they're wired up for four pins, as you can see. Looks more like they're wired up for two pin. And then it's a proprietary connector. It's not so bad because uh, at the end of the day, you get in all of this done for you. So. As for the what actual uh, general specification, as for socket support. Now it does support LGA 1851 as well as a, uh, LGA 1700. It does support AM4 and AM5. Now the thermal compound that's included is the uh, MX6. The connector for the pumps obviously is a four pin, and then obviously and the for lightings ARGB. The total weight 1705 grams as for the cpu block however the vrm speed or the vrm uh, fan by here does go between 400 and 2500 rpm with a current at 0 0.05 amps at 12 volt dc now the pump which is by here the pump it ranges between 800 and 2800 RPM, that is PWM controlled. The current and voltage is a 0 0.38 amps with a 12 volt DC. The dimensions are 109 by 91 by 69 and the LEDs are 12 times ARGB Gen 2 LEDs. And the current volts for that are 0 0.40 a 
with a 5 volt DC. As for the radiator and the fan, it's normal. It's 450 millimeters with a diameter of 12.4 millimeters and the inner diameter at 6. Now, as for the radiator, the radiator is made out of aluminium. The dimensions are 317 by 138 by 38 millimeters. Wow, that's a thick rad. Now, Let's get this installed on the test bench and see how this performs. Okay, so when it comes to the overall insulation, now what you want to do first of all is grab these, these plastic washers. These are for the brackets. So you put them like this, like that, like that, and like that. That's done. Now, you have brackets here, but that are labeled, if you can see. Left, right, very easy, very simple to actually navigate. Now, when it comes to the insulation part, what I suggest doing is this. Put the screws, each side, go like this, like that. Now, obviously, this is going to depend if you try installing this on a case that's right up. Obviously, it's not going to work, but doing it like this, where you can just tighten it a little bit, keeps it in position, stops you from... Uh, losing track of the plastic washers at the back so you just screw it until it stops both sides that's the, le the left one done and then of course you take the right one exact same process it would be easier with a magnetic screwdriver for one side all about getting that initial uh, initial grip on the threads of the back plate now, of course, this is only for uh, AMD specifically. This will also include AM4 as well for this insulation because they use the exact same type of black plate, except for AM4 back plates, of course, are a tad different. They, uh, of course, do come off where the AM5 doesn't. Okay, so you get the block. Now, it's going to have this sticker on. This is because of the pogo pins. And then, remember to take off the base plate, the protective cover on the bottom. And this, you peel it off because this is for those little magnetic or little pogo pins. That is for the top cover. So, when it comes to thermal paste, it is the polymer therm that I used for this. It does come with MX6, but I, I find this a bit better. But, obviously, it's more for consistency for myself, because this is the only thermal paste I actually use for testing. I will be changing the thermal paste soon, but that's just for that for now. Okay, so what you want to do, place it up this way. That's where the poker pins go. What you want to do is place it in the middle. Place one side and one side like that now with this you will have to put a bit of force because there is a little bit of a tension here so you will need to you tighten it down until it stops until it's fully seated okay so that's fully bottomed out now when it comes to connection types now it does come into two different types of connections which do have a proprietary 12 pin but this goes to the this part here it goes well, sorry, it goes on there, actually, which is right on the side, but there. Now, you get to pick two different ones. You can pick this one by here, which is specifically for the pump as well as the fans. Or you can pick this one to do individual cables. That's going to be really up to you. So, uh, me, personally, I would just do the single one because it's a lot easier. And from what I've read in the manual as such, it says that even the pump and the fans will be individually uh, being able to be individually controlled through just this cable so if that's going to be up to you but this goes on the side right here in a 12 pin variant ARGB where does this go well I'll show you the header now okay so you see this header by here that is an ARGB header so these pins here you want to make sure you line them up and then just put it on like this and then you go down like that until it's done now these connections here obviously this has got three individual ones for the pump the vrm fan and the cpu so the cpu fan is usually close to the cpu itself then you've got the pump which is going to be just up from it so basically just take the four pin here 
for the CPU or you take individual ones that come with it, it bundled and you put in the CPU for the fans and then you put the pump one in the pump header and that's it for AM5 installation. This is the fan to 50%. Very quiet, 50%. This is at 100%. They are very loud at 100% fan speed. Okay, so when it comes to the overall testing system I use, it is my AM5 platform. It's an AMD Ryzen 9 7900 with 32 gigs of DDR5 from my PSA. It's an MSI B650 motherboard with an RX 7800 XT Nitro Plus GPU. It is also housed in the ShadowBase 800 FX with a 1000 watt cooling power supply. And it does have four 140 Lightwing fans from Be Quiet as well. As for the room temperature, well, the room temperature at the before testing was 18 Celsius, but it did go up to 21 Celsius after testing. As for the testing methods, well, I've done two different types of tests, 50 and 100% fan speed, but these are normalized tests. That means leaving the overall AIO to equalize during testing. So it's about 20 minutes to leave it equalized during each test. So for the CPU power at 50% fan speed, the high was 165 watts with a low at 155. The CPU clocks were high at 5.4 with a low at 5.1. So you're not really losing anything there. Cinebench are 23. The idles are 29 with a max of 85. That was normalized. Blender Pavilion idles 29 with a max of 85. Blender Classroom idles 29 with a max of 85. And 3D Markship test, the idles are 29 with a max of 74 Celsius. As for the 100% fan speed, now we did get a little bit more power this time the cpu power draw at high was 172 watts with a with a low at 163 with the cpu clocks being the exact same 5.4 high 5.1 at low so for cinebench r23 the idle did come down to 27 celsius and the overall testing of the whole board is actually the temps have come down so the max of cinebench r23 is 82 with a uh, blender at idle at 27 with a max of 81, Blender Classroom idles 27 with a max of 81, and 3D Mark Super Test the idles at 27 with a max of 70 Celsius. Okay, then, so what did you think of that? Now, all I'm going to really say is that this will be the first AIO I've actually looked at from Arctic. Now, as for a uh, performance standpoint where it's fantastic for thermals, which it really is, I do think the VRM does definitely help. The Motherboard was definitely a lot cooler when it comes to the overall VRM uh, thermals. Now, obviously, that is going to contribute to better thermals as well because it is cooling the around the capacitors as well as the VRMs around the CPU socket itself. So that's obviously where it comes in handy. Now, I haven't actually reviewed many 280s. I don't usually get 280s. That's why there's no comparison chart because this is literally the second one I've had since i think 2020 not 2020 actually since i started so i can't really compare anything and uh, it's not exactly fair to compare it to a 360 because these are 140 fans they do push more air than a traditional 120 fan so yeah at, as for the pricing the pricing it depends on where you get it from but if you do use this link that is in the description or and you use this code that pops up on the screen at back to the office code UK you will save five percent at checkout so go check that out save some money and if you want the white or the black they've got it in both variants they also do sell the 360 versions so just make sure you use my code at the end of checkout and get five percent off 
as for this AIO, it's a good AIO. Do I recommend it? Definitely. It performed fantastic. And quite honestly, the price isn't that bad. If you're considering thermal right, then they don't actually do many 280s. I don't think they do any 280s. The only ones I've ever seen is 240s and 360s. So if you're looking for a 280, I could probably say this is probably one of the best on the market. So that's going to really depend on what you're looking for. Obviously, a 280s are much bigger and it's a lot harder for certain cases to accommodate. But that's up to you completely. So yeah, I like it. It gets my recommendation. And as always, don't forget to subscribe because I've got absolute tons of stuff coming. Lee and, B, Lee, and Lee build. Then they want me to do, uh, they contact me again for another one for a budget uh, build. I've still got that Intel motherboard to review. I've got a uh, the Lexa, uh, one terabyte uh, SSD to review. I've got a Gen 5 nvme from kingston so make sure you subscribe subscribe for that i've got absolute tons of stuff one is behind me that i need still to review and as always i hope because of a fantastic week and weekend ahead of you this is richard welsh tech good bye